So you may have caught it in the last episode, but um, it wasn't actually spawning the four upgraders. Uh, little problem in the code here where harvester target was set, but I didn't set upgrader target. Anyway, in this next video, we're going to work on getting the builders to actually uh, search for construction sites that are available and then go ahead and spawn. So I'm going to put down a structure for them. We're going to do this tower right here. And then over here in our code, we're going to modify this a little bit. So we have basically the same template for each unit type. But here we're going to change it up a little bit and do um, builder target, um, builders equals game creeps, filter, or the role equals builder. And if builders dot length is less than builder target. We're going to spawn new builder and roll builder. So what this would do is spawn one of these guys right here. And it just has two states, very similar to the upgrader, where it will have a harvest state and a building state. The problem is, right now, it would just spawn two um, builders all the time. Instead, what we want to do is, if there's a construction site, um, then it would run that code. So we're going to do this. Uh, let sites equal, or targets, that works. Uh, sites equals the creeps room. So instead of the creep room, we're going to just do the room, which is defined here, and that passes through. Sites equals room, dot find, find construction sites. So if sites dot length is greater than zero, so if there's a site, and the number of builders in the room is less than the builder target, it's going to go ahead and spawn one. So let's save this and see what happens. There we go, builder spawned. Oh, I'm still in the structure placement mode. Looks like we have a new problem over here where all the units are going to the same source rather than spreading out between the two of them. That will require writing a little bit of logic to fix that. It also has this issue where it's switching between the sources, having to do with um, whichever one comes first in execution order. So one way we can actually solve this issue pretty quickly is going over here uh, to our code and storing that uh, position in memory. So we'll do it for upgrader, but it's probably the most important. Um, here we go. For our sources equals group dot room dot find sources. That source equal creep memory. So the creep like the room has its own memory um, here in the documentation we can go over to creep and then we go to look at uh, memory here it is so very similar in structure to the room it's memory.creeps name of the creep gets you that object so what we're going to do is we're going to store the source do came dot get object by ID so we can't store the actual game object in memory uh, because of the way serialization works and storing things long term in text format you can't store the, the actual object 
but we can store is the the ID of the energy source. So in the game, if you click on an energy source or any object or any creep, it's going to have this ID. So that is what's going to get stored in the memory for the creeps. And that will um, be what we use to find that object again in the game world. So what you can do is this object called game dot get object by ID right here. So we can pass it the ID and it will return the object. So right here, if there's a source in memory, it's going to use that first or it's going to be this guy. And this is an array of sources. Um, so what we'll do is actually we're going to do something different here. Function find in your Source. And we're going to have that function be passed a creep. Let sources equal creep dot room dot find find sources. If sources dot length, because that's going to return an array. So if there's a length of sources, return. Uh, sources zero. That way I can do this right here. Then remove this. So it will only run this function, which is a little bit costly having this find, if there wasn't something in, in memory. Um, change this to source and then so I'm going to have this guy return a source uh, but also set the memory creep memory dot source equals sources zero dot ID. So that will get the ID of that energy source and store that in creep memory. So I'm gonna save this guy, see if we did everything right. Looks like we're fine. Let's click on this guy. He's a builder, so he won't have this change yet. Upgrader will. So the upgrader has a source. Looks like the builder is building that tower. Let's go ahead and make a few more changes in this video and implement this logic in the other. Well, rather than making it for every role, uh, it'd be better to make this into a prototype. Um, so we're going to make a new file, um, file, file, save as um, JavaScript uh, creep, and functions. So it's a little bit different when you do this. So here's some documentation on prototypes, but here we have a person object and 
this uh, is a constructor uh, like a lot of other languages but all this constructor is doing is giving us some default values and here we're setting a new um, key within this object and giving it the value English um, let's find a better example here's one where we're actually uh, doing some logic so when we call person dot prototype dot name so we can do uh, person dot name in console and it's going to execute this function and return the first name and the last name so in our example here in scripts what we're going to do is um, use it to find this energy source and we do that by saying creep dot proto type dot find energy source equals function find energy source let's match that same style and there we go and instead of using creep we're going to use this so this is a placeholder uh, which is a reference to the object itself so we need to replace all instances of creep with this and save that guy and the other thing we're going to need to do is now include that file um, var creep functions equals require same and this is not lighting up because it's never actually um, there's no references to that uh, file but we should be able to now do this right here so harvester we're going to change this guy to uh, creep dot so creep is the creep object and it's going to call this function find energy source and no um, no parameter to that let's see if it works looks like it's still working for the upgraders um, let's go over here and implement the same harvest logic in the builder and save that guy so I'm going to throttle the script server down a little bit so that we stop having this uh, lag but let's see over here Here's the builder. And then in his memory, he should have a source listed if we've implemented this uh, prototype correctly. So using these prototypes is uh, great for writing a lot cleaner code. Like in the next video, I might actually move this entire um, harvest lo uh, logic to a function called like get energy or something like that. Uh, we can use that in the future to either pull from the storage or some other type of um, container or uh, revert to um, harvesting if there's no container available and the creep has work parts. If it doesn't have work parts, it'd have to wait until a container was filled again. Um, so this allows us to have a more complex logic that applies to that applies to or can be called from any creep uh, object. Anyway, so if you have questions or if this didn't really make sense, uh, leave me a comment down in the description. I'll get back to you. Uh, I'll try to explain a little bit better for you. Uh, thanks for watching.